guys all right today we have three books to review i missed february review and the reason being is that i got through these two book the first two books of the durani series in january end of january and february and beginning of february but by the end of february i was still reading the third one and i was like well I'm already pretty much, I was like halfway through this one by the end of February. Well, not really, but I was like a quarter of the way through by the end of February. So I was like, might as well just finish the trilogy and then just do a big old trilogy review um, for March. So here we are, March review, March book review. And we're going to start with the first book of the Catherine Kurtz's Dorini trilogy. These are, this is, of course, spoiler free. Um, so yeah, Dorini Checkmate. Now, pretty much what the Dorini series is about is, well, there's, uh, no wait, no, it's not Dorini Checkmate. That's not, the first one is Dorini Rising. I'm sorry. I got, I got my order mixed up. <laughs> uh, Dorini Rising is the first book of this series. Um, essentially there's this, the Dorini are a people that, have powerful magic now humans are slightly capable of doing magic they all have the potential but it is really the Dorini that the magic descends from so essentially you have to have Dorini blood in you to be able to perform magic uh they're kind of kind of think of it a bit like i guess treatment of jews in europe throughout history um looked down on kind of ridiculed uh sometimes slaughtered um I, I think that would be the closest comparison that i can think of in terms of historically um so yeah uh but it kind of it's it kind of feels like that system where magic has disappeared and now it's coming back into the world i kind of like that I, li I, li I like that a little bit i also like the systems where magic is heavily involved right i'm not too picky on that but uh, for the first one, this is a pretty short book. It's, I think, under 300 pages, or it's just barely over 300. And the way Catherine Kurtz writes is it goes by fast. Like, it's very easy to read. Um, now, I had started reading these after I had read The Red Knight, the first book of the Red Knight series. Um, and their writing styles are very different. So it's a bit of an adjustment period. But the, this is, a, I think, I would say slightly easier language than the red knight to read now this is, was written in the 60s it was part of that uh, wave of adult fantasy that came after the success of lord of the rings so yes this was definitely a book pretty much published following to, to bank in on adult fantasy cash but it's still really well written by Catherine Kurtz. this is this is a really good book um now, this is obviously, this is the first book of the series. I would say it is not the weakest of the first trilogy here. Um, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's short. You don't really learn too much of the world or the history in this. It's kind of setting things up, and you can definitely feel like she has plans for a trilogy. But also, like, it could stand alone on its own if it did not, if it was not successful. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of the vibe that I got from it, because it does end on a on a note that's like, yeah, this this could this could be a standalone book, and she could never write another uh, word or whatever in this universe that she's created. But it was a successful book, and she of course went on to write many more books. There are multiple trilogies set in this world, and honestly, that's kind of the style I like. That's the style I'm looking to do with my series. Is I want to craft a book craft a world and then just write in that one world i don't want to write books outside of that world i just want to be in that world that i'm writing anyways for Dorini rising i give it an eight out of ten um easy to then it's a quick read easy enjoyable pretty good but the world building is a little weaker here because she's kind of just setting things up without going too deep into it now number two Dorini Checkmate. This is when we start getting to see a more, a, more of a realization of what 
what her world is. We start getting a deeper dive into the world building and really the d history of the Durini. This is a bit of a step up. However, the way that it ends, it kind of ends. I wouldn't say necessarily like Empire Strikes Back, but kind of where the good guys don't necessarily lose, but they don't necessarily, they don't win, right? Uh, it, it's, it's definitely a middle book of a trilogy. You get that feel. I personally do not like those. I like stories where you get that kind of complete ending, right? There are character arcs that are complete throughout this book, right? That's fine. Like you get the character arcs, but the overarching story or whatever, like I, I personally enjoy it when books have a story in it and then it ends or, or you take the George R. R. Martin approach and the entire series is like working off of each other or whatever right like book one had a complete finite like yeah this is self-contained story here pretty much um did it or was there a tease of a bad guy there was a tease of a bad guy at the end of of Durini rising but you know it, it, it's still I, I don't know how to put it into words but this just definitely felt gave gave me the energy of a middle middle trilogy book right i don't know how much better to word that that's my personal taste and preference on middle trilogy books um like i don't i, I don't know how to really i think okay i think i know how to mention it now there were things presented in here that were presented in this book that were not present in this but they did not get resolved in this book and they do not get resolved until book three is i think the best way to word it and i personally do not like that um unless of course it's a big series like a song of ice and fire where there are themes where it's a constant thing that you're used to in that series where uh, something is introduced in this one book and may not get resolved until the fourth book and then something's introduced in the second book and may not be resolved until the fifth or there's an event that starts in the first one and still is not resolved by the end of the fifth book, right? However, Catherine, the way that these books seem to give me the energy of is that they don't really operate like that. At least that's not what happened here. Um, pretty much everything that was mentioned in the first book was resolved in the first book. So going from having everything resolved here and then going to a book where the things are not resolved, I think is where my issues come from. However, the writing is still very easy. This one is under 400 pages, over 300, is under 400, but over 300, longer read, still really nice and simple to read though. She, she has, she does a good use of, she has a good use of prose. Um, I'm going to give this a seven out of 10 um, for personal preferences. Now we move on to the big boy of the first tri Durini trilogy. This one is over four, just over 400 pages on the paperback. Hi, Durini. This one I enjoyed a lot more than the second one. This is where we really get into that world building and I loved it. I loved the deeper dive into the world building that we got here. We got more experience with the other cultures that are present in the world that she has created. We get the feeling of a diverse and lived in world like this this is a best of the trilogy i would say right off the bat i give it a nine out of ten I'm, I'm gonna say it this is a nine out of ten book um as long as you read the first you have to read the first two before you read this one to appreciate what is in this one um things are resolved from book two since it's the end of the trilogy they don't mention anything that doesn't get resolved um now of course there are there are a couple things that aren't entirely resolved but you can kind of make your own guesses as to what's going to happen to them they're they're resolved in a way um where it's satisfactory for the reader um like you don't need the answers to certain things that happen um right like you don't need the answer for a couple of uh, 
uh, things that happen in this book or the continuation of them. I think that makes sense. Probably not. Uh, it makes sense in my brain. <laughs> um, yeah, this book, again, her writing. Like, I ended up, I finished this last night or the night before I am recording this. And I finished the last five chapters, the last, like, I think 60 pages in under an hour because I was just really getting into it at the end. She's definitely one of those writers where it's like the last few chapters really pick up the pace and you're like okay i've got to keep reading i can't put it down that's the that, whereas you know the front i'd say front half of the book are more is it is definitely slower paced and it's definitely something where like you can read a chapter and then set it down for the day or for the night or whatever right that is how i typically approach books i read a chapter or two a night set it down go to sleep um that's my nightly routine but uh yeah hi Dorini, a nine out of ten we get a much, much deeper dive into the lore of this world. We also get answers to certain things that you didn't necessarily know you needed the answer to, but it was nice to have uh, those questions resolved, right? There was a, there's a kind of a mystery thing happening in these first two books that happens you don't necessarily need the answer to. You're kind of left wondering, oh, wonder what that is or who that is blah 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 and then that gets resolved here in high Dorini. it wasn't something that was necessarily needed but i like the answer that was presented um so yeah nine, overall for the trilogy i'm gonna give the trilogy a nine out of ten um i found myself really liking the characters um now the characters of course are not morally really morally gray as we are used to in our modern fantasy as this was the 60s so like there's a very clear distinction as to who the good guys and who the bad guys are um i'm wondering if that's going to change in her later writing but uh yeah that was the first durini trilogy by katherine kurtz hope you guys enjoyed this video um hopefully i'll have a book read in april that i will be able to share however i will be writing my thesis in april finishing up my my bachelor's thesis on alfred the great in april so who knows if i'll have the energy to read um but anyways that was the Dorini trilogy i hope you guys enjoyed this book review remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more and i will see you guys in the next video peace